Hey guys and welcome back to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to show you how to create some custom vectorized text with a rough halftone texture applied to it. Let's head onto the computer now and see how we do this. Okay so before we start you can actually download this template file as well as the texture image that we'll be using to create this effect from the link in the description. So be sure to do this. It's the exact same file we're working from here so you can follow along from home. Now this is the effect we're going to create. If I click on this you can see that it's all vectorized. All of these are anchor points and paths so it means we can scale this infinitely. Over to the right hand side we have another artboard set up just with some plain outlined text. So we're using a typeface called Barlow Condensed here, but in the template file we've already outlined this for you. So that's all we've done is typed this text out and then outlined it. So it just means if you don't have the typeface installed, you don't have to worry, this is already vectorized. So what we need to do is place in the textured image that we're going to use to create this effect. So I'm going to go to File and Place. And I'm already in the folder here, it's called texture image. I'm actually going to uncheck the link option because we want this to be embedded into the document. So I'm going to click place and you can see we get a small thumbnail preview here and I can either click and drag to select the size or I can just click once and that will place this in at full size. We can show you how to create these kind of textured images in a different video. However, we're just giving you an idea of how we apply kind of textures like this in Illustrator and vectorize them. So this can really be any image any kind of texture, you can download plenty from the internet as well. So you can see it's very simple, it's just made up of these halftone dots and we actually created this simply using Photoshop. So what we're going to do now is move this down below the text we have. So over on the right hand side in the properties panel, I'm just going to go to arrange and send backward. Now we have our text appearing here and what we want to do is create a clipping mask so that this image is only appearing where the text is. What I'm also going to do before I do anything else I'm just going to slightly resize this. I want to rotate this ever so slightly just to give it a slightly different look. Now before I create a clipping mask I need to create a compound shape out of this text. So what that does is it essentially means that Illustrator is treating all of these characters Characters as a single shape so even though they're not joined or overlapping it's treating it as a single shape which helps when we're creating things like clipping masks so to do that I can just go up to object scroll down to compound path and then make you can see the shortcut there is command and 8 on a Mac or it'll be control 8 on a PC so I can simply click and drag over both of these now we have them both selected and now I can right click and go to make clipping mask so you can see now the image is only appearing where the text is. The image file is still there. You can see if I hover over it, you can see the red outline of the image. I'm just going to select this now. The next step is to add an inner glow to this text. So this is a technique that will just give this a more natural look. We don't actually want the halftone pattern going edge to edge. It looks more natural if we have a slight inner glow. So to show you what I mean, we can go up to effect, go to stylize, and then inner glow. Click our preview on and I already have these settings set up to work with this so if you just copy these settings it should work too. So we want the blend mode to normal. You can see there are a few other options but normal works best. I've set my opacity to 100 because I want the edges to be purely black here and we've set the blur amount to 30 pixels so that's just really affecting how far in this effect is going and I want the edge setting to be selected. So I'm just going to click OK and you can already see this is doing quite a good job however we want to vectorize this so this at the moment this is still an image sitting within some vectorized text. So what I want to do now is select the text. That's going to essentially select everything. And then we want to rasterize this. So this may seem counterintuitive to creating a vector version of this text. Rasterizing any kind of selection basically means we're flattening it into an image. However, that's part of this process. So we're going to go up to Object, Rasterize, and you'll get a dialog box popping up. This is all set up based on our document setting, so it's an RGB document, we want this to be 300 dpi, that's just going to give us more resolution, don't need to worry about anything else. I'm just going to click OK and we now have a, a white background in behind. This is essentially being treated as if we've just dragged in a JPEG image with this text. What we want to do now though is use Illustrator's really powerful image trace feature. I have this already set up over on the right hand side. If you don't have this though, you can access this through the window menu. So I can go up to the top, click window, 
scroll down and you're just looking for image trace. So I'll select our rasterized image. So we want to choose the default preset. Make sure the mode is set to black and white because we just want this to be black and white for now. And I want to make sure ignore white is on. So if I click this, this is essentially going to get rid of all the white areas. Now you won't see anything change now, but if I click preview, you can now see that all the white areas have disappeared. Now the texture isn't coming through that well and that's just because we need to adjust some of these advanced settings. So the first one I'm going to adjust is the threshold. So this value has the biggest effect on how much of the halftone pattern comes through. So if I drag this further down you will see more of the effect is coming through. So I'm actually going to take this down to about try around 17. You can see if I zoom in this will actually affect some of the edges of the, the characters as well so it's giving this an even more sort of distressed look. Double click into this we'll try 15. I think that will probably do for now. In paths I want to push this up a bit more and this is just going to give us a little bit more detail as well and also slightly affect the size of the halftone pattern we're getting here. Could equally take this back down the other way. I think I prefer it a bit further down. So it's just about playing around with these settings. You will notice though with preview checked every time you make an adjustment it will have to load again to preview it. However it's working quite well in this instance. Can bring the noise down not making a huge difference but that is looking good to me. So now all we need to do is click expand over on the properties panel and it's under the quick actions. Another way to do this is to go into object then we have an image trace menu here and then we can click expand from here. And as you can see this now vectorizes text. What I'll do to finish off I'll just grab my eyedropper tool by pressing I on the keyboard and I'll just select the color we have here. And there you have it. So there you have it. It's a really simple effect to recreate. If you have any questions at all or would like to know how we created the halftone pattern image effect do let us know in the comments down below. Remember to like the video and subscribe for more content and if you'd like to know more about our full graphic design course visit graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time.